Hey, what's up guys? Uh, so yesterday I tried to do a box opening of a new game called Shadespire from Games Workshop. And uh, unfortunately they were putting up the sign yesterday. <laughs> and during my recording the uh, sign guy was uh, using his scissor lift and creating quite the annoying beeping noise. And uh, when I got into editing, you'll see when you open it up, uh, not a lot of space to operate, so sometimes the clippers and other, uh, seems like they also have the tokens in here. So let's open this up. See the different sizes. I mean, the different sides. So it's kind of cool. You can get really creative with how the uh, game boards are arranged. Yep. It was uh, obvious that <laughs> I wasn't going to be able to keep the footage. But anyway, so I wanted to kind of do a rebox opening. Um, I'm going to keep some of the footage, kind of show some of the footage, how I put the pieces together in certain things. But um, just kind of want to go with you guys over the game a little bit, how it's played, how the decks are put together, how things go, and uh, we'll kind of take it from there. Alright, to get started here, this is the quick start guide, which is cool because uh, a lot of games people don't really sit through the whole book. They want to kind of jump in, do some turns, kind of figure things out, run into some problems, and then they usually go back to the rule book. Uh, so this quick uh, start guide is a pretty cool way to start because it kind of just tells you how to play the game. You know, there's three rounds. Uh, you, you can move a fighter. Um, it shows how it's the movement cost, uh, how many wounds a fighter has, its defense. It explains um, once a fighter has moved, they can't use that they cannot use it again. There's a, a, a token you can put on them. Um, kind of explains the dice a little bit. Here's the defense dice, wound tokens. Explains charges. Kind of gives an example of the movement here. And uh, basically how the game's played really quick and how to score victory tokens and just kind of shows you how it all how the game starts and how to put everything together and um, at least get going and playing. So uh, let me take out the pieces here and show you what we put together. So these are the Blood Reavers. There's five of them. Pretty cool. Can't wait to get these painted. And then these here are the Liberators. And they're in the blue. So it's kind of cool they came up with uh, colored plastic here, so you don't really necessarily have to paint them right away to get them get playing with them. Um, kind of just put them together. It wasn't too hard to put them together. They have a nice little quick step-by-step uh, -step guide to put them together. I threw that together. So here's the Blood Reavers. These are the different characters. Okay, so those are the these guys. This is the army that you're fielding, these five guys. Now if you look, they got four movement, one defense dice, and they take two wounds. This guy can take four wounds. This guy can take three wounds. Uh, you can see uh, the weapons they're carrying. This guy's got a piercing blade and axe, gore axe and blade, great axe, chained axe. He also has a brutal chop. He has a blood drinker axe. Now their special ability is, when you see this, at least three fighters are out of action. When three fighters are out of action, it triggers their special condition. And in that case, you flip these cards over. And now we're on the gold side. So the stat lines change a little bit. You can see the movement's increased. Um, the wounds are the same. But the damage dealt by these weapons are a little bit more, too. So, uh, 
yeah, that's kind of one of the caveats of this game is that you can have a chance to trigger and make your guys more of like an elite unit. So, so that's them. That's the Blood Reavers. They also have the deck of their deck of cards. Now, they give you a beginning deck that they recommend to start with. Um, and they give you extra side cards later to put into the deck and create your own decks, but they recommend kind of playing through the game a couple times first with these pre-made decks. So that's what we're going to do. You can see there's upgrade cards you can put on your character. There's instance. There's a weapon, Wicked Blade. And then these here are the objective cards. So certain objectives, if you can get those objectives done. Alright, so that's the Blood Reavers. Here are our Liberators. There's three characters in the Liberators. Bright Shield, Oberyn the Bold, and Steelheart. Um, these guys also trigger too, but these guys are a little bit different. These guys individually trigger. This fighter rolls a shield or a exclamation mark when the when the target of an attack, you can flip this over to this other side. You see the difference here? So here he's got one Sigmarite hammer. And you flip it over. He's got a Sigmarite hammer and he's got a Furious Pari. So, kind of cool. Kind of cool little uh, mechanic they put into this game to kind of Kind of change it up a little bit. And here's their cards. This is their deck cards. And here are their objective cards. So, awe inspiring. Immediately after your warband has taken out two or more fighters out of action this phase. So if you get two fighters out in one phase, you can score this victory point. Score this at the end of the third phase if none of your fighters are uh, taken out. So if you keep everybody alive. Um, so it's an interesting game. You know, it's, it's, it's a quick skirmish. It's only three rounds and uh, you're probably not going to wipe the whole other team out. You know, and it's possible that you just kind of stay alive for <laughs> during that time too. So uh, depending on what your cards are, you know, you want to change up what you're in. This one looks pretty powerful. This one has five. Uh, score this at the end phase if all your enemies have ta been taken out. So, well, there you go. There's <laughs> there's the uh, inspiration to be aggressive and take out the other guys because you can get five points if you have this card. Keep the enemy fighters out of your territory. Hold one objective. Different objectives. So, yep, there's the different cards for those guys. And they also give us third pack. These are extra cards. And they don't recommend using these until you've played the game a few times and kind of know it with the decks they've already pre-made. And then you can kind of mix things up and start to customize your deck a little bit. Well, let's take a look real quick at the dice. These are cool. These dice are really awesome looking. Uh, they're not the typical D6. Um, maybe it's because they, they'd like to have the proprietary dice, which is kind of cool. Um, so here's these are attack dice right here. And these attack dice, if you look on them, they got one attack, a smash attack, one fury attack. These are support symbols. That's half a support. That's a full support. And this is a critical success. And then on the defense dice, you have the same thing. You have a critical su success. You have a uh, defense symbol block. So if your character has a block defense symbol on them, um, such as these guys, with the shield, that's a block. They use these. Um, but if you have one of these blood reavers out, the block symbol doesn't mean anything. You actually want the dodge symbol this symbol to pop up because he has the ability to dodge. 
So it's also got the support symbols, a half support symbol and a full support symbol on it as well. So those are the dice. Um, so I think the thing now to do is to set up the uh, tiles and maps and get ready and uh, maybe demo this out. So we're going to go over this real quick here, uh, how we place the game boards. Uh, we have choices here. We can go long, lengthwise. We can kind of go asymmetrical. We can place them flat against each other. Or we can go lengthwise and we'll do them any which way we want. I think if you go uh, the long way, you have to have three hexes that are complete, and if you go shorter side, you have to have two complex hexes that are complete, I believe. So, so anyway, um, for today, I think we're going to do it like this. We're going to set the board up like this. Um, so basically, you'd have a roll-off to kind of see how this works. And whoever has more critical successes um, gets to place the first board or chooses who places the first board. And then places the second board. Um, then you shuffle up your objective tokens. You have five objective tokens. And you shuffle these up. And uh, you can place these, uh, the player that placed the first map can place this anywhere on the battlefield as long as it's not one of the starting locations, which has the uh, Warhammer, Warhammer Underworld symbol on it, or a blocked hex, one of these blocked ones that are obstructed. So the first player, let's say, would maybe place one here. The next guy might place an objective token here. This guy might place an objective token here. This guy would place one here. And let's say this guy places the last one over here. Um, so once all those uh, tokens are placed down blindly, we don't know which one they are, and we flip them up, and we got the numbers that correspond to them. Now these numbers will correspond to certain objectives. Like this is hold objective three. So if you're on, if you have this card in your hand and you are on objective three at the end of the round, you can play this and get one glory point. Okay. Um, the next thing to do would be um, to place the, the units. Now, whoever plays the first board gets to place the first unit. So let's say the red player did and. Red player is going to want to be aggressive, let's see. And he's going to start. You can't start on a victory condition, but you got to start on one of these starting tiles. So he's going to start this guy over here. He's going to start with him over there. And then it goes to the other guy's turn. And he's got, uh, let's see here, Steelheart. Steelheart, he's going to start over here. And it goes back over to the. Uh, Blood Reaver side. This guy here with the axe. Let's see, we're going to start him. Yeah, so the guy with the big hand. We're going to put this guy over here. Oops. This guy's going to start here behind this victory condition. This guy will start on this spot. He will start on this starting spot. last two fill in and there we are set up okay now from that point each player is going to draw five cards from this deck from their player card deck and three cards from their mission deck okay they can have in their hand you can have as many player cards as you want these ploy and these upgrade cards but you can only have three of these mission cards in your hand at a time. So if you spend one, you got to get rid of one. 